Another woman right here with us, Dr. Zakir Naik himself. Dr. Naik, thank you very much for coming over here. Great pleasure. Great pleasure having you. Great pleasure. Saying that this is where America's question is, and West's question is, one more time, the old imperialist policies were done, were done in a new form today. Dr. Naik, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Dr. Naik, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. If you look at the Arctic state, if you talk about the Hindustan, we are selling water, we are selling water, अपने सीड्स बेच रहे हैं, अपनी संस्कृति को बेच रहे हैं, कोई ऐसी चीज नहीं है जो हमने मल्टीनेशनल्स को बहुराष्ट्रीय कंपनी को ना बेची हो। आज की तारीख में वो हो गया है। ओपन इकोनॉमी का मतलब है ओपन इनविटेशन फॉर द एमएनसीज़ टू डू इट, व्हाट अवर दे वांट टू डू। Well, open door policy is good, it's good for some Indian companies also, but we must be very, very aware of what is going on. That's right. कहने का मतलब ये हुआ कि हमें अपने आप से झूठ नहीं बोलना चाहिए। बिल्कुल सही। तो और दूसरी चीज अब जो पैदा हो गई है, तेल आपको मिल गया? Iraq has been destroyed, Afghanistan has been destroyed. Now you say that Islam is a religion. Islam means it's a terrorist religion. And they have succeeded more or less. Isn't that right? Of course, because they have control of the media. The whole media is their own. Yes. The whole media is their own. And the media can say the truth, 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 the truth. यहाँ एक चीज मैं आपसे जानना चाहूँगा जैसे एक जमाना था जब आईआरए का आईआरए की दहशत थी बिल्कुल सही दी 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 आयरिश रिपब्लिक का नाम ही बिल्कुल सही स्पेन में अब तक एटा जो बास्क सेपरेटिस्ट हैं उनकी दहशत है जब वो ट्रेन को उड़ाते हैं जैसे अभी सात सात की जो बात करी हम लोगों ने उसके एक बरस पहले मेड्रिड में ट्रेन में बम दास हुआ था वो एटा वालों ने किया था आपको याद होगा उस वक्त ये कहा कि एटा टेररिस्ट एटा टेररिस्ट ब्लो अप ट्रेन I mean, do you think that you should talk about this? That's why I have heard my story, what is the Muslim religion? I have heard a story in Pune, which was given in English version in Bombay, after the train bomb was in Bombay. This terrorism is a Muslim monopoly. And it has given all the statistics. If you look at the statistics in the last 100 years, how many Muslims have been attacked? Hardly. Majority is not Muslim. I don't say that any Muslim will never kill the Muslim. If I say that, it's wrong. There are some black sheep in the community. So, they take the portrait of black sheep as they are the true Muslims. And they will see the IRA's history of the IRA. They are the Catholics. It is a fight between the Catholics and the Protestants. Yeah. But no one has said that they are Catholic terrorists. No one has said that they are Christian terrorists. Why? Because they are the Catholic terrorists. 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 Yes. Now, LTT. मिस्टर ऑफ क्रिश्चियन दिन नहीं अब हिंदू टेररिस्ट वर्ड आ गया है अब साधवी प्रज्ञा सिंह के बाद बाकी सबके बाद हिंदू एक्सट्रीमिस्ट टेररिस्ट ये वर्ड आ गया है बट एनीवे नहीं जब बी वी वी साधवी प्रज्ञा के जब आ गई बात जी किसने मुझे पूछा था आप क्या साधवी प्रज्ञा को मानते हैं कि वो टेररिस्ट में तो मैं ये कहता हूँ मैं यही नहीं कह सकता हूँ कि वो टेररिस्ट है ना कि मैं कह सकता हूँ कि वो संत है ये साधवी है ना वही है जस्ट वन स्मॉल क्लारिफिकेशन जस्ट फॉर अभी वो जस्ट वाला साधवी प्रज्ञा सिंह इस कंसर्न साधवी प्रज्ञा सिंह को अरेस्ट किया गया मालेगांव के बम दास के लिए मालेगांव को जो दूसरा ब sometime tomorrow, all right? Now, this, this is the funny part. But anyway, we will not go into the Indian judicial system. That's but what I'm trying to say, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, Wahid, don't you think that everybody should get together and perhaps counter this? Because what's happening now is 
کہ باقی جتنی کمیونٹیز ہیں وہ اطمینان سے بیٹھ کر کے یہ سوچ رہی ہیں کہ بھائی آج دیکھیے مسلمانوں کے ساتھ ہو رہا ہے تو ہونے دیجیے ارے بھائی کل تمہارے ساتھ بھی ہوگا ہو سکتا ہے ہو سکتا نہیں ہوگا یہاں مل کر کے سب لوگوں کو جیسے ایک زمانہ تھا آج کل تو خیر نہیں ہے پنڈت نہرو کے وقت نان الائن موومنٹ شروع ہوئی تھی اٹ واز اے گریٹ موومنٹ اگینسٹ دی ہیج منی آف دی اولڈ امپیئرلس پاورس ڈونٹ یو تھنک وی نیڈ سم تھنگ لائک دیٹ ناؤ ٹوڈے لیکن آپ جیسا بہت کم لوگ سوچتے آپ کو کیا وجہ تھی کہ کہنا بس آخر بہت کا آدمی تو آپ جیسے سوچنے والے بہت کم لوگ ہیں ویری فیو پیپل تھنک لائک یو دیٹ لیٹ اسٹینڈ آؤٹ فار دا تھروتھ سو اگر ہر انسان سوچنے لگے کہ ہم حق کا ساتھ دے جی تو اس دنیا میں امن آسانی سے پھیل جائے وی ڈو بیکاز وی ڈونٹ ہیو اے چوائس we can see what's coming because that's right he, 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 you know, there's a train coming at you and if you feel nothing is going to happen to you if you stand on the tracks well god help you that's all that i can say you're intelligent you can see the train coming some people don't right. see the train coming right so so what i'm trying to say to you is don't you think it's time now everybody should get together and say that hey listen but what they do that those people who are strong in saying this they want to suppress them they want to silence the voice so that's what they're trying to do to me but i told them the more they try to suppress me the more louder my voice will be Right, wonderful. And, and do you, do you uh, in, in terms of your study, sorry to come back to the thing, you are, I mean, you are studying, and the rest of the things you are doing. So how many hours do you study the uh, holy books or whatever you do? There was a time I used to study a lot. Right. But tell you frankly, now, the time I spend study is very less. Previously, there were hours. Why well, you, become, you become a rock star? No, no, no. You become famous. No, 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 you, no, no. no, no, no. You got people coming all around. <laughs> I told you, I'm a student. I will remain a student. It is not because that, you know, I have read many books. And the more I read, the more I realize I don't know. The more I know, the more I realize I don't know. So now I'm feeling the crime that why don't I have the time? Therefore, I tell my colleagues, now you have the time, read. So now because I've been involved in so many other activities, social work, speaking about the truth, not a rock star. <laughs> so the thing is because of that so now it depends upon if it's issue based or if I'm giving a talk that is the time we really take out the books and we may shut ourselves for a few days and just get some more material to give a new talk but previously there were hours that we used to spend daily with the books and now it is depending upon the demand demand forces then we have to do it right but in, in, in terms of uh, when you prepare for a speech how do you do it you know you know you've got to give a talk tomorrow That's for right. example how do you do that depending upon the time that I have at disposal If I have more time, then I read the books related to the topic. Right. If there are many books, then I give a rating. This book is excellent. This book is very good. This book is good. So depending upon the time of the disposal rating, and depending upon the time, then I start reading the excellent one first. Then very good. Then good. Same thing with the videotapes. Same thing with the internet information. So we go on the internet and see what is required. And then depending upon the time of the disposal. If it's more, then we see videotapes. We see internet reports after verifying it. Uh, books, etc. If the time is short. Suppose you said that give a talk after one hour. Then I go to my data bank. I go to my own computer, got a given computer. I start penning. Whatever I know. Any topic, okay, fine. Then what I know, I jot down. Because I cannot read in one hour books. And I can't give a good talk. So then I have to go to my data bank and see in my data bank what I have in my memory, in my hard disk, which will link to the top which they have asked me to give. And that's how I search. And I get it. And then I give a talk. Same thing, question and session. When they ask me a question, I've got only a few seconds. Either I might get up from my seat, I go to the microphone, I repeat the question. In that 10 seconds, I have to formulate the answer. So I click, I go to my data bank, to my hard disk, and search which is the best answer that I can give. So by the time I repeat the question, in that 5-10 seconds, I have to prepare the answer and give it. Wow, wonderful. Wonderful to have a memory like this man, and wonderful to have an analytical mind which makes connections and goes forward with referrals and other things. Isn't that amazing? That's really and truly amazing. All right, now since we really have come to the end of this interview, um, you've also been accused of making fun of other religions. Have you ever done that? Running down other religions? Have you ever done, done that? that? Actually, I cannot do that because if I do that, that will go against my own Quran. Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 108, that revile not, abuse not those gods who they worship besides Allah, lest in their ignorance they will abuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I do that, I'm going against the Quran. What I do, I try yeah. and find out commonalities. Even though I can criticize, I don't. But there are certain occasions, which I have to be frank with you, when someone asks a question, and he asks me a question, okay, what is this about the Veda? I try and evade, but sometimes I have to speak the truth. And one such occasion is, you may be aware that there was a person by the name of Dr. William Campbell, 
wrote a book saying there are 30 scientific errors in the Quran. For eight years in America, no one replied. So the American is called me in the year 2000 on April 1st. I went to Chicago and we had a dialogue. And the topic of the dialogue was Quran and the Bible in the light of science. So there I had to defend the Quran. And since the topic was Bible, I was forced to take out some unscientific points mentioned in the Bible reluctantly. And I told, I'm doing it with a very hard heart. But since I'm forced to do that, and I told the Christians that don't feel I'm here to criticize because the topic is such, I have to present the case, I have to put the case forward. So as a general... So Dr. I, William Campbell played devil's advocate and provoked you, right? Yes, and I love it because the more people attack a thing and when I give a logical reply, the more they get convinced. So I don't mind anyone attacking Islam. But do it straightforward. Rather than misquoting, going to the YouTube, taking out a clipping, say front, you don't agree with this first of the Quran. So the thing is that because my answers are so logical, based with reason, logic and science, that's the reason I find that they are finding that the people coming to my talks are increasing and that's endangering the agenda. Dialogue. Dialogue. Discussion, 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 debate, 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 rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal conclusion, conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words. Dekhun, Shomuk Shamore, Proti Ryoshpoti Bar, Ratno Tai, Apuno Shamprochar, Shakal Chale Doshtai, Bangladesh, Peace TV, Banglai. Nubiji Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Muni Mukta. Abu Huraira Radiallahu Anhu Balin Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Punachin Jakun Manush Mritu Barun Kore Takuntar Amul Bantu Hejai Tin Tibetito Ek Sadakai Zaria Dui Elm Jardar Upokash Haditohai Ebung Tin Nek Shantan Jetarjun Duakore Sahi Muslim Dityo Kondu Osiyat Othay, Hadith Shankha, 4005. Oti Uttam Arthunit, Sargoshishto Banijunit, Sotik Lenden, Boitho Pai Borola, इस्लामी औरतों ने ती कतो शुंदर भावे नुतों जुगे ते शफलोता और जन करे छे जाना जन्नो देखूं इस्लामी औरतों ने ती बरोबरती अनुष्ठान पीस टीवी बांग्लाय ओए नो कमिंग बैक टू द कुरान कमिंग बैक टू द होली कुरान जस्ट अ कपल ऑफ डाउट्स दैट आई हैव इन माय माइंड which I would like to clarify over here, since we've got you here. Sure, right? it's my pleasure. All right, so, my pleasure too. Can you imagine I've got Dr. Zakir Naik over here to answer personal questions of mine. Uh, in, in terms of women's rights, as far as Quran is concerned, what is the actual situation now, according to your reading, of the burqa in the Holy Quran? From whatever I know, the word burqa does not exist in the Holy Correct. Quran. Correct. Is that right? Yes, so, that's all the word that's right. here. So, so what does that mean? Is the veil mentioned in the Quran? Does it say anywhere that women should be covered and should not come out? Yes. Because after you reply, I'll say something else. Sure. Okay. So as far as the hijab I can mention, veil, I don't know any verse in the Quran which says that the veil, the face should be covered. As far as the word hijab is concerned for modesty, before Almighty God speaks about the woman, Almighty God speaks about the man. Okay. Almighty God says in Surah Nur chapter 24, verse number 30, say to the believing man, that he should lower a gaze and guard a modesty. Whenever a man sees a lady, a woman, and if any unashamed thought comes in his mind, he should lower his gaze. So first the Quran speaks about the hijab for the man and then speaks for the woman. The next verse of Surah Nur, chapter 24, verse number 31 says, that say to the believing woman that she should lower a gaze and guard a modesty and display not a beauty except what appears ordinary of and draw her head covering over the chest, over the bosom and display not beauty except to a husband, father, son and the close relatives is given. And basically, it's further mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 59. These two are verses of the Quran we speak about the hijab. It says that, O Prophet, tell your wives, your daughters, and the believing women, when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, the jilbab, 
so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. And if you go to the sins of the Prophet, we come to know that there are basically six criteria for hijab. Hijab is the right word. The first is the extent. For the man, it's from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and the hands of your wrist. There are some scholars who say that face should also be covered, but according to my understanding of the scripture, covering the face is not compulsory. The second is the clothes they wear, it should not be translucent or transparent so that you can see through. Third, the clothes should not be tight fitting so that it reveals the figure. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not resemble that of the other beliefs. And sixth, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. So these six are the basic criteria of hijab that is mentioned in the Quran. Right, now we're here. The questions I would like to ask you sure, is this. Sure. Because there are lots of descriptions of battles which have been given, even in the Quran and even in Islamic history. Sure. We have seen uh, Arab armies march into battle, and we have seen in the early days the women used to go into battle with the men. Of course. Lots of times. There so, are many examples. There are lots and lots of examples. And I don't think any of them wore a hijab, or I don't think any of them were covered in that way. No, 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 come right. to it. If you say naqab, right. I would agree with you. Naqab <laughs> is a word which means covering the face. That's right. And hijab means covering the body except the face and hands of the wrist. Even the men in the olden days, yes. they were completely covered. If you say at the time of Mughal time, no, they used to wear the cover, they used to wear a helmet. So men was the only yes. thing you could because say. There were lots of women who are, who, who are mentioned actually having carried a sword into battle. Of course, and, of course. Right. But but again, carrying a sword doesn't mean that you... All right, now intermixing, we, we, we've got that. All right, I hope you guys got that. Uh, you you, you want to say that in Hindi? You want to say that in Hindi or will that take too long? All right. Yes, I know, sir. <laughs> All right. Now, intermixing of men and women. Yes. Because, 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 because I just read that the Saudi Arabian government has decreed that at parties, men and women, if they're found to be intermingling, they're going to be uh, subjected to some lashes or something like that in public, public lashing. Now, what's the rule with regard to that? And See, does it apply today? Now, my point is, what, what is the point I'm trying to make over here? The point I'm trying to make over here that the Holy Quran was a, uh, as you say, word of God revealed at that time. Put it into your spectrum. Yes, for that time, for that particular time to see to it. So which is the reason why, one of the reasons why Islam succeeded to the extent that it did, right from the Horn of Africa, right up to Southeast Asia, you've got Islamic countries all over the place. Isn't that right? And that obviously has to do with the word of the Holy Quran and the manner in which the religion is practiced, where there are no caste system, where there is nobody who's big, nobody who's small. Of course, that has crept into Islam right now. Too late for us to talk about that at the moment because as far as India is concerned, it is almost as if you can see Hindu caste in, you know, among Muslims. Do you think the Holy Quran has to be taken literally or does it have to be interpreted philosophically looking at where we are today? As I told you earlier, that all the scriptures that came before the Quran and all the messengers that came before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were sent for a particular group of people and the message was meant to be followed till a particular time period till the next message came. Because we believe in the Quran, that Quran is the last and final revelation, though it was revealed 14 years back, it was revealed in such a way that the message is supposed to be followed till the end of the world. But as far as interpreting is concerned, whatever the Quran says, we have to believe in literally, in terms of getting a commentary of the Quran, it is the Hadith, the sayings of the Prophet. So right. whatever the Prophet has commented on, if it's commented, it is for that time, for today, and till tomorrow, till the end of the world. There may be certain things which may not have been interpreted. For example, the Quran says, the first verse, first two verses, Ikhra bismi rabbikal azikhla, that read in the name of the Lord who created, the creator of the human being from something which clings. So now previously they thought alaka was a congealed clot of blood, which is true. But now they have come to know that human beings they have been created for something which is a leech-like substance. So now today science tells us that the embryo in the initial stages looks like a leech. So now that alaka has got three meanings. First we thought only one meaning was applicable. Now we came to note that even the other two meanings, something which clings and looks like a leech, are applicable. So that doesn't mean that I'm reinterpreting. Because science is advancing, I'm you able to understand. You are understanding more. Understanding better. Right. But That's once the way. prophet has said that this verse means that way, that cannot change. It will be for that time, for today, and forever. So regarding your question of intermingling, coming back to it. Right. Intermingling. Intermingling per se. For example, intermingling, going for dance parties, dancing, catching each other's hand with a foreign male. Foreign doesn't mean a foreigner. 
when we say Nahmeram, means a person who's not a close relative, who's not your wife or is not a brother. No, going so close. Everywhere the society differs. For example, I'll just give an example coming back to modesty. You know, when I went to America, USA, and I gave a talk there, and I give the example that if there are two twin sisters who are very beautiful, equally beautiful, walking down the streets of maybe New York, one twin sister is wearing the Islamic hijab, complete body covered, except the face and the hands up to the wrist. And the other twin sister wearing the Western clothes with the mini skirt and a short. And round the corner, there is a hooligan who is waiting for a catch. Who also is a girl? Which girl will it tease? The girl wearing the Islamic hijab or the girl wearing the mini skirt so short? And the reply is, the girl wearing the mini skirt so short. Now coming back to it, that he told me, but the Indian women, they are very modest. And I was shocked, believe me. I said, what is an American telling me that the Indian women are high modest? I said, why do you say that? He told me that the Indian women are so shameless that they show their belly. And I was shocked. So his perception is right. that you can expose Sorry. the top and below, but you cannot expose the belly. So for him, immodesty is exposing the belly. So every culture keeps on differing. Everyone has their own views and ideas. Like in certain countries, maybe the strict Muslim countries, we would say that looking at a girl, staring at a girl also is immodesty. That's what the Quran says. In India, no problem you can look, as long as when you wish also you say from far away. You don't shake hands. So your shaking hand will be modest. You go to many Western countries, shaking hand is not immodest. Some Western countries, the girl and the boy, they kiss. It's not immodest. Some of the Western countries, you can do what you want with the opposite sex, as long as it is with permission. Yeah. That's not immodest. So the society keeps on changing. Where do you put a limit that what is immodest, what is not? So therefore, as far as the Quran is concerned, that Quran says in Surah Rum, chapter 30, verse 21, we have put love and mercy between the hearts of the husband and wife. What we have to realize, it should be channelized in the right way, in the legal form. You cannot say that if she is not your wife, you want to, you know, dance with her and spend the night with her and say, fine, this is freedom. So I believe in the teachings of the Quran that there should not be free intermingling of sexes of the opposite sex. But if you say that, fine, but natural, if you go to a doctor, and if a lady doesn't find a lady doctor, she goes to a male doctor, there's no problem at all. Perfectly she can go. Because that's a requirement. But just fooling around, intermingling at places, higgling, haggling, you know, going for dating, sitting in the last right. row. So, we got that. All right, we got that. All right, we got that. We got that. We got that. I don't want to say anything on that. <laughs> all right, one final question. And this is not really the final question, this is the second last question. What does the word Quran mean? Does it, what does it mean? Quran comes from the word Qara, means to read. To read. It means a book, a book which is meant to read. Doesn't it mean there's one particular interpretation which also says the reading of the man who knew not how to read. Isn't that right? No, no, Quran means to read, Qara, that's right. it. And it's also Furqan, one of the attributes. Yeah. Furqan means the criteria to judge right from wrong. So right. Quran is also considered as a criteria to judge right from wrong. All right. And um, isn't there also a direction to all Muslims? that they must educate themselves and acquire as much knowledge as possible. The first guidance given in the Quran to all the human beings, including Muslim, was not to pray, was not to go for pilgrimage, was not to fast, it was to read. And that's what I quoted, Ikra, chapter 96 was Ikra, read, and then says, read in the name of the Lord who created, who created the human being from something which clings. So the so first guidance was to read. Why don't Indian Muslims, and even non-Muslims, follow that? Why don't we do that? I have to say why that... Why do we hate acquiring knowledge? Why do we do that? Because I have to agree with you. I agree with you that there are a large percentage of Muslims who don't pay importance to education. In fact, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it is obligatory for every Muslim man or woman to acquire knowledge. It's compulsory. Right. So unfortunately, unfortunately, and there are certain Muslims who feel reading English is wrong. Why? If you are getting education, there is no problem whichever language it is because the Quran says that all languages are beautiful. That yes. Allah made human beings in different colors so that you recognize each other. Allah has made, Almighty God has made different languages so that you speak. So what we realize that unfortunately it is the culture which has crept in, it is not the religion. So religion says read but the culture creeps in. So there are many cultural things which mix and people think it's part of religion. For example, you said Burqa. 
but but as far as the prophet as far as almighty god education is very important and every muslim whether man or woman he or she should be educated it's compulsory right and that really brings to an end this interview with uh, dr zakir naik and let me tell you this as far as the number of sms's your sms's are concerned uh, the server has crashed <laughs> i'm so sorry the server has crashed i mean there's nothing that i can do about it there are too many of them coming in from all over the place so we should be able to tell you that i'm sure there must be around 40000 by now okay. we had about 36 37 or 1000 the last time i checked so there must be around 40000 and all of them uh, coming in your favor so that's great that's really and truly great so you've already won the battle even before you have gone to court <laughs> no my main court is in the next life but hopefully we will see what the verdict is given by the uk court right wonderful absolutely wonderful um Thank you so much for coming over here, Dr. Naik. It's a pleasure. Great pleasure having you with us. And all this, all Thanks, this uh, talk with you is most interesting, very educative and very enlightening. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Very pleasure. pleasure. One of these days, we must have a proper debate. Inshallah. Thanks, sir. That will be very and truly nice. Right. Time for us to go as well. Time for us to go as well. But you keep watching them. And Dr. Naik's channel is called Peace TV, which is P-E-A-C-E. -E. That's Peace TV. And you can, of course, watch him every day on Peace TV. Right. Thank you so much once again and God bless you and all the very best to you. Thanks so much. Assalamu alaikum. Ami Muhammad Badruddo Janadwi. आपना राधेक्षण पीस टीवी बांग्ला पसंतेर बिस्ती ते जमान सबूज हो उठे मरुभूमि धन्य जीवन तो है उठे अलकुरान एक ज्ञान एक जन्नत धारा है मनोवृत्ति दौर आपने किचन तो जहाँ जुड़े रानुमाए शुकुमाए अनुदंत जीवन ताहले देखून बिस्ती भी बांग्लाए आमादेर आयोजन अलकुरान एक जीवन को निष्ठो विधि विधान जानें कोतो शुंदर भावे पवित्र कुरान अगोनितो जीवन के आलोकितो कोडे छे अल कुराने जीवन घनिष्ठो विधि विधान काल रात शाने दोष्टाएँ पाप पुनो शंप्रचार शकल नौटाएँ बांग्लादेशे पीस टीवी बांग्लाए Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, that is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik. Dekhun, Ardhangini Nati Tangini. Proti Rabibar, Rat Shade Shattai, Apuno Shamprochar, Shokal Shade Notai, Bangladesh, Peace TV, Banglai.